This is Renoir's The Bathers. The art critic for the New York Times says it looks like two croissants on a plate of greens, not a compliment. But the painter Matisse said that it was probably it was among the greatest works of art ever painted. The painting is the centerpiece of an exhibition of his late works, currently at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Here's the Los Angeles Times review. It says late Renoir is bad Renoir. Take that. It is sort of almost a, it's a, it's a given that is simply simply not hip to like these pictures. It, Joe Rischel is a senior curator at the Philadelphia Museum. I love Le Renoir and always have, since I find myself being getting my dukes up and saying, we're trying to sh- revisit this. Who knew that Renoir could get people so riled up? Pierre-Auguste Renoir is still admired for paintings like these, icons of Impressionism, busy with brush strokes, dappled with light, alive with color, but in the 1880s, he changed. He finally has the means to travel, and so he goes to Italy and he goes to Algeria, and these are just amazing opportunities for him to to see different parts of the world, and particularly in Italy to be confronted by the works of the great sort of Renaissance artists. Paintings by Titian, Raphael, Rubens, Velazquez, among others. He actually decides that he doesn't know how to paint and he doesn't know how to draw, that he has to re- completely rethink his style. Jennifer Thompson co-curated the late Renoir show. A series of reclining nudes um, that Renoir does, starting in about 1903. Meaning he becomes obsessed with painting flesh. Right, Renoir often spoke about how he loved models whose skin took the light, and you get a great sense of a sort of glowing flesh here. He was quoted as saying, when I've painted a woman's bottom so that I want to touch it, then the painting is finished. These are precisely the paintings critics today love to hate. So this is about sensuality. It certainly is. And I'm sure in a certain way that every day is Sunday, Blythe, if you're that happy, you must be superficial. It's the Doris Day phenomenon. You can't have any talent if you're doing that sort of thing. But while he was alive, and for decades after his death, Renoir's late work was prized. Um, They're almost all Renoir. The one at the very top, you've got Renoir, and then the three across, Renoir, Renoir, Renoir. Martha Lucy is associate curator of the Barnes Foundation outside of Philadelphia. How many Renoirs are there in the Barnes Foundation? There are 181 in the collection and it's the biggest collection in the world. About 85% are from after 1890, and 50% are from the very last decade of Renoir's career. Dr. Albert Barnes invented Argerol, an antiseptic used in the eyes of newborn babies. With the money he made, Barnes assembled one of the finest collections anywhere of Impressionist and early modern art. In a letter to another collector in 1913, Barnes wrote, I am convinced I cannot get too many Renoirs. So what happened? 1910 to 1919, you know, the last decade of his life, he was considered by many critics to be the the greatest living painter. And I think that what happens is um, around 1950, there's this shift in taste. I think that modern art starts to be understood as something that has to be difficult, um, challenging. Something Renoir's paintings were not. He painted the snug world around him, again and again using his wife's cousin Gabrielle as his model. He dressed his children in elaborate costumes. He seemed to be a man in denial. This is just at the end of his life. and The war is on, um, and you can see he's a rather enfeebled fellow, now with his hands very doubled over with this horrible, horrible arthritic condition he had. But he's having the time of his life. But look at what it takes him to paint. This extraordinary film is part of the Philadelphia exhibition. It was shot in 1915, in the middle of World War I. Two of Renoir's sons had been wounded in battle. His wife had just died. Matisse asked his friend, why torture yourself? Renoir's reply, The pain passes, but beauty endures. 
By that last difficult decade of his life, Renoir had moved from Paris to the south of France, hoping for relief. Confined to a wheelchair, he lived to paint. Instead of reality, he painted these sunny fantasies, one after another, always experimenting with how he applied his paints. At around the same time, this is what Matisse was doing. Picasso's work had already begun to look like this. And yet, both of these much edgier artists owned paintings by Renoir and learned from them. You know, the colors are kind of applied in these blocks, almost, um, which you see Matisse doing later on. Matisse and Picasso thought Renoir's later paintings were beautiful. But are they? Or are today's critics right? And one of the things that you see over and over again is comparisons of his paintings to um, cream puffs and to um, like frosting. You know, it's like too many calories in a Renoir. He did more than 4,000 pictures in his lifetime. There were 700 in his studio on the day he died, at the age of 78, on December 3, 1919. That morning, he said, I think I'm beginning to know something about painting. You decide.